and our word for today on this Thursday in the octave of Easter, this Thursday, April the 4th, our word for today is recounted. Recounted our word for today, and here to talk about it, Andrew Reinhardt. Good morning, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Good morning, Dave and Ron. How are you? Doing Doing great. Happy Easter. Yeah. Thank you. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is Mm. risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yeah, this this great season, this octave, this feast that's so great that it can't be contained in a day. Mm. But we re- relive the feast for the eight days after, and then it resonates for the fifty days after mm. Pentecost. So, mm. so it's the blessed time in the church year. Mm-hmm. So our word for the day is recounted. This coming from the beginning of the gospel it says the disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way, and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Now, so this gospel really begins with the end of the story from the road to Emmaus. And it's that great story where the apostles are, are leaving Jerusalem. Mm. Jesus appears to them in a way that they don't recognize. He opens the scripture to them, encounters them through his body, but then they only recognize him when they share the meal, and then he breaks the bread. In that, in that language in the Gospel of Luke, there's a, a beautiful connection here. Um, the language that's used the kind of verbs about him taking, breaking, sharing the bread, line up with the previous verbs from the Last Supper, right? So it's Mm -hmm. clear from the text that Jesus is doing here what happened at the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. And so it's in the Eucharist that they recognize him. But this idea of recounting, right, this is part and parcel to this Easter season, because what we start to see here in the Acts of the Apostles a good way to read the Acts of the Apostles, which you could think of, of the Gospel of Luke, Volume 2. <laughs> it's written by the same author, and it's a continuation of the narrative. Now that that we have the uh, Jesus risen from the dead, and, and of course the season preparing for Pentecost, the Apostles are doing in their ministry what Jesus did in his ministry. Right. So Jesus gives his followers this promise that they'll work even greater deeds than he did. Mm. And this promise is made good on in the Acts of the Apostles. And so we have these amazing stories of, of, of miraculous healings, of the apostles walking powerfully in the Spirit, of great massive conversions of the people. But one of the things that's happening throughout this is recounting, recounting. Right? We have the apostles here, after this experience on Emmaus, recounting what happened to the other apostles. They're, they're evangelizing each other. Mm-hmm. They're, they're sharing God's words with each other. And here in the Acts of the Apostles, we have a recounting of the great deeds the Apostles did after they received the Holy Spirit. And now in our life, I would propose that the core of our our, our faith, the core of of how we come to believe and how we share our faith with others is recounting. Recounting. You know, this this idea of recounting or or belief by testimony... (laughs) might be another way to see it. This is just core to human experience, right? Like, would our legal system even function if we couldn't have the testimony of witnesses recounting what they saw happen, what they experienced? You know, so much of how we operate as humans, we take on by a kind of natural faith that what I've been told is trustworthy, that I can believe the recounting of another person, the witness of another person. Right, that's child rearing. My son has very little way of verifying much of what I'm teaching him now that he's he's two and a half. Mm-hmm. You know, but the human mind is designed simply to trust authority. Think of go back to you know when you learn something about science or about the way the world works or what's going on in geopolitics. Right? We just almost by default trust what we're being told as humans. We trust that there's actually a war happening in another part of the world. <laughs> right. We, we, we trust that there's actually these little pieces and parts down deep down in cells that we can't see with our naked eye. <laughs> right. So much of how we function as humans comes down to believing witnesses. And of course, this can be abused. You know, think of things like propaganda or, or uh, you know, scientific things that have been misrepresented in studies to, for financial gain or different things like that. But the fact that that this basic human thing can be abused doesn't mean that we all of a sudden stop believing witnesses. So this experience of receiving something on testimony is simply to be human. 
And we're left with the fundamental choice. Are we either going to trust and be able to flourish, be able to live, be able to operate in the world, or are we not going to trust mm. and be crippled and basically need to crawl through life in a way that's hampered? So as we think about our faith, right, are, are we going to trust the witness that's being given to us in the scriptures and the witness that's being given to us in the preaching that we receive in this great Easter season? Or are we going to doubt? And then as we go out boldly, we need to be willing to be witnesses, recounting the good things the Lord has done in our life for others, recounting the great works, recounting our own conversion, recounting, you know, what we truly believe. And we can trust that, that the people receiving our words Right? If they're going to be just simply human, <laughs> right? that they're designed to receive the truth by recounting, by the words of witnesses. So our word for the day is recounted. Mm, wonderful reflection. Thank you, Andrew. Thank Happy you Easter. Have a blessed week. Yeah, Happy thanks. Easter. Thanks so much. And um, thank you for listening to Morning Offering today. Hopefully uh, you'll join us tomorrow morning as well here on Annunciation Radio.